Hey, what up guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to talk about Turing completeness. We're going to discuss why this is important for Ethereum and why Bitcoin scripting language is not Turing complete. We're going to discuss the design decisions and thoughts that Satoshi had when he decided not to give Bitcoin a Turing complete language. So let's get into it guys. As we've talked about before, Ethereum is a platform for decentralized applications, meaning that we can write applications that run in a decentralized manner. Uh, there is no central server or, or central entity that is going to execute these programs. The programs are going to be executed on many, many different computers. And uh, this means that there is no way to take down such a decentralized application. And in order to write such applications, you need to develop smart contracts. And smart contracts are written in a programming language called Solidity. So on the Ethereum blockchain, if you want to write a smart contract, you need to learn Solidity. And Solidity is Turing complete. Uh, so what does it mean? To understand that, we need to go 60 or 70 years uh, uh, in the past. And so in the past, people had different calculation machines. And the problem was that if you had a machine that could calculate something, it could only calculate this one uh, problem or this one algorithm. So you would give it some inputs and it would run, run the algorithm and give you some output. However, if you wanted to implement some other algorithm, if you wanted to run some other program, you had to rebuild the whole machine from scratch and, to, and make it uh, run the new algorithm. You had to change the machine's internal structure. And so Alan Turing, uh, one of the greatest, uh, greatest mathematicians and computer scientists of the previous century, he developed a machine. He didn't actually develop a physical machine, but he developed a theoretical machine. He uh, explained how such a machine could be built. And so this machine that he developed in theory could run any program. And he, in his theoretical explanation of this machine, you could build it with simple tape and some kind of head that could turn left and right, and it can also store data. So basically, he he explained how you could build a computer that could run any program and solve any kind of computational problem. That being said, there is no guarantee how long this is going to take. Some, some programs are going to be executed in a minute, but some programs, for example, finding some solution to a, to a problem based on prime numbers could take thousands or several thousand, thousands of years. So there's no guarantee how long a computation would take. However, there is a guarantee that sooner or later this, the problem will be solved. However, there's no, as I said, guarantee how fast this will take. Maybe it will take until the universe is um, destroyed. So there, there are no time guarantees. However, in theory, you could solve any, any computational problem on this Turing machine. And so today, when we say that the programming language is Turing complete, we mean that by using this language, you could develop any kind of application. You could solve any kind of problems. And when a language is not Turing complete, it has some restrictions that prevent it from solving any kind of computational problem. And so Bitcoin scripting language is such a language. You can't use it to solve anything. And more practically, uh, one important feature of a Turing complete language is loops, meaning that if you have loops in your programming language, you can tell a program to do a set of instructions over and over again. And this is what we have in Solidity. Solidity has loops and Vitalik usually explains a Turing complete language as a programming language with loops. While Bitcoin 
scripting language doesn't have the loop feature. And so if you want to do something a hundred times in the Bitcoin scripting language, you would have to copy and paste the code a hundred times. While in Ethereum, you could just write it once and tell the computer to execute it a hundred times, for example. And so without loops, it's very hard to solve any kind of problem. It is impossible to solve all of the computational problems we have. And the design decision, why, why Bitcoin doesn't have a true and complete language, comes to spam prevention. The whole idea of having loops is it could be dangerous on a blockchain because if, if you have a loop that executes some, some kind of code millions and millions of times and this code has to be executed on the blockchain, it will, it will really overload the network. And that is why uh, the developers of Bitcoin have decided not to give Bitcoin a Turing complete language. It was a design decision. Uh, to give Bitcoin a language that is not Turing complete and doesn't have any loops. Ethereum, on the other hand, need a Turing complete language because they want to be the decentralized, the uh, platform for decentralized applications. And in order to build an application, a uh, useful application, you will most likely need loops and you will most likely need a Turing complete language. So they decided to make Solidity Turing complete. However, however, there is this problem of spam or, and the network overload. What if someone writes a super crazy program where he just has a lot of loops and just keeps executing and burdening the whole network? So Ethereum have solved it by introducing fees for each operation. So each operation you have in your Solidity code has some kind of cost. And in order to execute your smart contract, you will have to pay for every single operation. So if you have a loop that loops a million times, you will have to pay for each and every one of the instructions and operations in every loop iteration. So if you have five operations that are executed in a loop that runs a hundred times, you would have to pay for 500 operations uh, and maybe more because you have this loop overhead. So, so you need to, uh, maybe it's even a bit more than 500. And so Ethereum solve the spam problem by introducing fees for each operation. Uh, and one, one could ask, um, why didn't Bitcoin introduce something like that? And I think the answer is that uh, Bitcoin didn't really need to have a programming language to that could be used to build any kind of applications. I think when the Bitcoin was created, the developers thought that uh, we just need some simple functionality, some simple smart contracts that would really enhance the Bitcoin uh, blockchain and would add extra features to this blockchain. Uh, however, Ethereum wanted to take it to a whole nother level. And we need to keep in mind that Ethereum is a newer project and uh, with whole other use cases. Ethereum wants really to be a platform for decentralized applications, while Bitcoin's main idea was to just develop a cryptocurrency and transfer value. So that is what Turing complete languages uh, are. They are languages that can solve any problem. Uh, but we need to keep in mind, guys, there is no guarantees how long time such a solution could take. I mean, some we have some computational problems that can take millions of years to calculate with current uh, computers and p current um, uh, current um, processing power. So for example, in theory, you could crack the encryption used in Bitcoin. It's possible theoretically, but it's practically impossible uh, and unlikely that someone would even uh, come close to cracking a, uh, a hash, for, for example. 
But we'll see with quantum computers. When co quantum computers are introduced, these computations that currently take millions of years could be cut substantially. Uh, and I have a video on quantum computing, which you can check out in the description if you like. And so that's it for today, guys. If you like technology and if you are a new viewer, you like technology, you like blockchain, artificial intelligence, you should definitely subscribe to the channel, guys, because you will find it interesting. I myself am a software developer. I post videos every single day. And also you can follow me on Steemit. I have a Steemit account, so you can check it out in the description as well. What do you think? Do you think that Bitcoin missed a big opportunity on becoming a platform for decentralized applications when they decided not to have a Turing complete language? And when I say they, of course, I don't know, maybe it's Satoshi himself, maybe Satoshi is an organization, but when the developers of Bitcoin developed Bitcoin, uh, why do you think they decided not to give it a truly complete language? Write your comments, as I said, in the comment section, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.